How's everyone doing? I just got back from picking up some Blu-rays. Somebody was selling them online and I went there and met them and picked them up. It was a great deal in my opinion. Go ahead and take them out of the bag and show them to you right there. And if you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them. They're essentially uh, $5 each except for the 4K edition right there, 4K Blu-ray, uh, 4K HD. Uh, Blu-ray 3D and Blu-ray and digital copy combo pack for the new Ghostbusters. This was $10. The rest were $5 a piece. And right off the bat, I felt like there was something a little odd with them because they had a bunch of different lots that they were selling. But they're selling, say, um, $5 a piece, uh, piece for each Blu-ray, but they had eight, and they're asking 50 for all when it should have been 40 And I even asked them about that, and the response was just a mess. It was hard to decipher. Um, it was just basically poor grammar and stuff that didn't make any sense. And like, read the description, blah, blah. I could, it didn't make sense what they were saying. Like, you had the prices set yourself. And usually if you buy more, it's less, not more. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I didn't, what I did was I bought uh, two different lots that they had and just left one out of each and got it for $5 a piece, except for the Ghostbusters one. And they all had their digital copies. And one of the things that was odd, a lot of them... Uh, that they had in the pictures for their listings didn't have the slip covers like this. But then when I went to pick them up, they had the slip covers, and I'm so thankful because that is one of the sweetest slip covers I've ever seen. Perfect for that movie. Um, so yeah, and I already I already sold the digital copy. So this was fifty-five dollars total for the ten movies, and I sold the digital copies for forty-five dollars. So ten dollars for 10 movies right there, a dollar a piece essentially. So that is pretty awesome. Dollar Blu-rays, dollar 4K Ultra HDs, can't beat that. And uh, yeah, I was shocked. Um, <laughs> so very happy with that. I've checked out all the discs. The discs are perfect. Everything is pristine. I don't know where they got it from or what the deal was. They're not review copies because Universal Titles put a slash through the back and there's a universal, couple of Universal Titles in here. They don't have that. So I don't know how they got it. I don't know if they bought the movies and then like copied them to the computer and then selling them. But they could have got more money for them. And in fact, I noticed they um, listed more stuff for more money. They were listed some of the ones for $10 and $15. Maybe they realized that they should have gotten more money. I don't know. But uh, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, I guess. First up um, is the new Ghostbusters movie, Answer the Call, which I have not seen this one yet. I've already talked about it. I did a whole trailer reaction for it. The trailer looked terrible to me. I know there's a bunch of cast, uh, original cast cameos, so that's good. Hopefully it'll be somewhat entertaining with the effects and good visuals and stuff like that. This is the 4K Ultra HD, Blu-ray 3D, Blu-ray digital copy combo pack includes extended theatrical versions. This is the only edition that has the 3D Blu-ray, which I thought was pretty cool and it comes in a thicker case right there. And I'm not a big fan of this cast and I think that was one of the biggest things. People were saying, oh, you don't like women, blah, blah, blah. You're hating on women. No, that's not it. I just think there's better female comedians who could play these roles. I cannot stand Melissa McCarthy. I think she is terrible. She's not funny. It is deplorable that she got an Oscar nomination for Bridesmaids for Best Supporting Actress. That is just mind-blowing to me. Um, she won Emmys for her role uh, in Mike and Molly over other people, Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, and that's just mind-blowing to me as well. That show is awful. Thank goodness it's off the air. Uh, but yeah, I'm, just, I'm not a big fan of this cast. I do like Kristen Wiig a little bit. Um, Kate, uh, Kate McKinnon is decent, but she does a lot of the same things in all of her roles, her facial expressions. And I just feel like Leslie Jones is playing the same character she always plays as well. Chris Hemsworth... Uh, <laughs> He looks like he's playing an idiot in the clips that I've seen, so looking forward to checking the movie out, giving it a fair chance for the price point, basically a dollar total. Um, I couldn't really pass that up, so there we go. Let me know if, you, if you've seen that. I figure for, for that price, um, even if I don't like it, I could resell it and make much more than I paid for it, essentially a dollar a piece for these. Um, next up is The Boss. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of Melissa McCarthy at all. I can't stand her. This didn't look good to me, but I love... Uh, Peter Dinklage in here, who I guess is the villainous character, and also um, uh, who's the lead actress in here besides uh, Melissa McCarthy. Uh, Kristen Bell is so stunning, and she's in here as well. Oh, so I figure you know what? For essentially paying a dollar for it, I'd give it a shot. There's really nothing that I've seen her in that I've really enjoyed. Like Bridesmaids, she was okay in, like it, not Oscar uh, award nomination worthy at all. The rest of the movies have just been that same kind of like a female version of Chris Farley, and it just doesn't work for me. 
Next up is Jungle Book, which I haven't seen this new one. I know they're putting out a 3D version coming up soon, which I'm not sure why they didn't release it at the same time. But the visuals look good on here. I'm um, looking forward to uh, checking this one out. There's been so many different adaptations. I remember the cartoon one. And this is directed by Jon Favreau, who he's come such a long ways from uh, Swingers and that, you know, Iron Man and all that. But a uh, great producer and great director as well. And it does look uh, very aesthetically appealing, so I'll be looking forward to checking this one out. Clown, which I have seen and I do own, so I'll be trading this one away or selling it. If anybody's interested, let me know. I'm down for trades. Um, yeah, this is basically based on the short film. And uh, they put Eli Ross' name on it, even though he wasn't involved on it. And then he contacted the people who created it, uh, John Watts. And uh, so now he's the producer. I think a lot of people are under the misconception that Eli Roth directed this. He did not direct it. He's just a producer on here. And this was smart what John Watts did. He put that short film out there and said from Eli Roth and got the internet buzzing. That short film was amazing. And uh, Eli Roth got involved and said, hey, you want to make this a full feature length movie? And they did. And I thought this was excellent. Um, the cloying. I like the backstory a lot and how creepy the clown gets towards the end of the movie is awesome. I would definitely recommend this one. Uh, one of the creepier clown movies out there by far. It's nice to see It finally getting a Blu-ray release. I think that was long overdue, Stephen King's It. and I saw like the remake and the new cast for that. Uh, I'm not too excited about that, but they're remaking everything. Uh, next up is Money Monster, which this looked very interesting to me. I haven't seen it. Um, I figured again. Once I ended up selling the digital copies, I sold digital copies like right away. And so I, I, I made them money back of $55 and I sold them for $45, so a buck a piece. It blows me away. It's awesome to me. So I'm all about finding those deals and bargain hunting. This one looks really uh, suspenseful, good drama in here. And I guess there's a conspiracy and dealing with uh, maybe uh, investors and Wall Street kind of stuff. We'll see. And good cast in here, though. You've got um, who else is in here? Got uh, George Clooney, Julia Roberts, Jack O'Connell, a few other recognizable people too. Angry Birds the movie, which I have not seen. I figure for the price point, why the heck not? I'd give it a shot. Uh, they're selling a couple other movies, but again, it was one of those ones where if you bought the whole lot, it'd be more ten dollars more, which made no sense. So I let a couple other ones go, but uh, and now they're asking for more money for those ones. But what can you do? And those ones weren't even that popular for titles. Uh, but Angry Birds the movie, I never played the video game. It looked like it could be a cute, fun, animated movie. I'll give it a shot right there. Next up is Now You See Me 2. Now, I never saw the first one, but I did see this one, and I love the heck out of this one. It's basically like a magician's version of Ocean's Eleven to me, and I love this slipcover. This is instantly one of my favorite slipcovers. Now, i got to take this uh, voodoo sticker off in a second, but, oh, I love that. Is this... Not sure which way the lenticular goes, but one of those ways has to work. And I love the star-studded cast in here. You've got uh, evil Harry Potter, <laughs> but he plays the, one of the villainous characters in here. Uh, Morgan Freeman, Dave Franco, who I think is very talented, younger uh, brother of James Franco. Woody Harrelson, Mark Ruffalo, Jesse Eisenberg, Lizzie Kaplan, who's stunning. And uh, yeah, I mean, just a fantastic cast in here. And you know what, Michael Caine's in here. Why is he not like one of the top people? He should be right on there. I mean, I know his role isn't as big, but it's important. And, uh, yeah, James Franco's lost his friggin' mind. I remember he was such a great actor. Then, like, once the Oscars hit, one, uh, essentially 127 hours, he just went downhill to me. Uh, he lost his mind during the Oscars. That was one of the worst Oscar performances ever. So, yeah, that's a shame. I mean, uh, what can you do, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this one to me was really entertaining. Uh, great magician tricks and great visuals, very stunning, great drama and twists and turns. Um, I will say, you kind of, it's formulaic, but it's satisfying, and I enjoy the heck out of it. Next up is Allegiant. This is uh, the Divergent series. I've never seen any of the Divergent movies, uh, but again, nice lenticular slipcover. I'll give this one a chance right here and check it out. And then has uh, Shailene Woodley, who I think is a very talented young actress. Um, I don't know which number in this series this is. It has a few of that guy's, uh, Miles Teller, too. Um, so I don't know if I'm, I should be checking out some of the other ones first or not. Let me know if you know. Uh, there's so many of these YA adaptations, young adult novel adaptations and stuff like that. The Huntsman, The Winter's War, which I have seen and I wasn't that big of a fan of. I love the visuals. I love the snowy setting. But that was it. I didn't enjoy the plot. It didn't feel like a standalone movie. It felt like just another continuation kind of movie. Um, I do love um, Jessica Chastain here. Stunning. 
I really liked her a lot. I think she was really the driving performance here. Chris Hemsworth, Charlize Theron, Emily Blunt. Um, again, taking down the evil queen. Two evil queens, really, in this one. Um, but, I, again, just wasn't that great of a movie to me. I basically picked this one up for uh, trade bait and, you know, the price point. I couldn't pass it up a buck. In great condition, everything like that. So if you're interested in that one, or Clown... And probably the boss too, because I doubt I'm gonna like that. I, I don't. I just picked it up for curiosity's sake. And uh, Kristen Bell too. Uh, next up is the Shallows, which this is also another trade bait or sell one. I love this one. I love the slipcover for it too. I do have the 4K version of it, and 4K version was stunning. That the clarity was amazing. Uh, Blake Lively is stunning too. I love the setting for this movie. This movie was made for HD and 4K, and oh, looks incredible on home video too. Um, I did check this out on Blu-ray. Uh, and 4K. So the 4K is a definitely an upgrade. Uh, even being upscaled, it looked fantastic to me. Uh, and this one was probably one of the better shark attack movies that I've seen in a long time. Way better than The Reef. This blows The Reef out of the water. <laughs> See what I did there? But it's basically a character-driven shark attack movie, and you really care about her uh, and get kind of engaged in her character. And that's important, and that works really well here. You see the development of her character all throughout, and just a very strong performance there. She's essentially the main person on the screen for the majority of the movie. And I like the little uh, seagull right there, too. I thought that was awesome. But, yeah, I like the slipcover a lot with the blood right there in the water. And definitely one of the better shark attack movies that I've seen. Probably one of my favorite movies of the year so far. I wanted to do a top ten movies list so far video for 2016, but really there has been a lot of movies that blown me out of the water this year. But there you go, those are the, the 10 pickups again, essentially a dollar a piece once I sold the digital copies. Again, they're asking five bucks a piece per, and then except for the 4K of the Ghostbusters, they asked 10, and I ended up selling digital copies for 45 and then 55, so 10 bucks, 10 titles, dollar a piece. That's amazing to me. So souped and excited for that. Again, there's some ones I picked up for trade baits, so if you're interested, let me know. Um, and a couple ones I haven't seen, and if you've seen any of these ones, definitely let me know what you think of them as well. Let me know what your favorite pickup from this lot is. And do you think that's a great deal? I'm just kidding. I know it's a great deal. I'm just, I'm still souped on that. I, when I get fine deals like that, I'm all about the bargain hunting lately. I just get so excited. I'm on like this high. I'm like, yes, because you can't beat those deals. It's amazing. And again, especially with that they had digital copies in there, that just blew my mind. I'm like, what were they doing with these then? I mean, they were in pristine condition. And I don't even understand why they were listing some of them without the slipcovers in the picture. And then they had the slipcovers. So it worked out fantastic. All the discs were in pristine condition, like I said, souped on it. And I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Take care.